Hey y'all, welcome to Horrible Gaming. My name is Nora and on today's video we are doing an island tour. Today's island is this stunning vintage European city. If you are somebody out there struggling with the castle items, this island today will bring you a ton of great Animal Crossing inspo. It also features some natural areas too, just in case if you also are out there wanting to add maybe some natural elements to a city like island. Regardless, I think that y'all are really going to enjoy today's island tour. So today's island was created by Zuby Harmony on Instagram. I will have their socials linked in the video's description. And here is the dream address in case you wanna to come tour with me. So today's island is packed with so much content. The island owner was able to decorate every single villager home on the island. And also all the beaches are decorated, which is really exciting in my opinion, since I love when islands are packed with so much content like we're seeing today. We will also be checking out some interiors on today's island tour. Normally. I don't do these on my island tour videos. I try to keep my videos rather short, but y'all definitely need to see these interiors because oh my gosh, these are the best interiors I think I have seen on Animal Crossing in a really long time. Now I know I don't usually specialize in interiors myself because well, I struggle with them. So if you're in my position, you are definitely gonna get some great inspo from all the villagers we did get to see today. So like usual, we're gonna be starting the island tour at the entrance of their island. We already have this really nice incline transition. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this island features a lot of really nice castle core ideas and just city core elements in general, but it also has some natural areas too. So if you kind of want to have an island that uses both structured and natural, then I think y'all are really going to like this. We also have several different ways we can access Plaza, but before we actually get the whole tour started, I read on their profile, we are supposed to enter this Mario pipe item right here. So we can like, you know, transfer over to this really nice lookout that we are about to check out. So this location on their map is really incredible because the view we have right here is actually a land bridge that we'll get to explore up close later on during the tour. What I love most about this land bridge is how different it is from the traditional style we normally see. I really love this natural approach and view that we have and then we have also the castle gate kind of like framing out these little tunnels for the water to flow through and behind the castle wall is actually a black curtain partition. So that's kind of how you can achieve a look like this. We will get a closer look at this land bridge in the video once we find that location on their map. So you can see a better view of it, but I'm telling y'all, it is just completely different from what we normally see. And there is just so much detail just on the bridge itself. So once we leave the Mario pipe item, I'm gonna start, I think, over on the left side of their island. And we have a villager home right next to the plaza. And like I said earlier, all these villager homes are decorated but I could not enter some of them so on each villager home we couldn't visit today feel free to let me know how they looked in the comment section below I'm definitely interested in seeing how these villager homes looked just because I am looking to decorate villager homes myself on a couple of future islands that we have been talking about on my live streams so it looks like this is another villager home we could not enter but I think it must be an antique shop given that we have the sign right there but we do have this really nice transition spot next to this villager home. I just really love the layering with the greenery and then the medieval walls. Looks like we also got a really nice bridge over here. I think this is at the edge of the map. So this is some great inspo if you are wanting to incorporate your river mouse into your build. And then we have this really nice angled pathway kind of just, you know, tying the whole area together. And once we move ourselves down towards the edge of their island, we have this really gorgeous decorated beach. Now all their beaches are decorated like I mentioned earlier. And something I really love when people do their beaches is when they use these natural paths kind of just on top of the sand. I just feel like it adds so much detail to your island just in general. So definitely some great motivation and inspo for people like myself who need to start decorating their beaches more often. So before we go back towards the left side, I just wanted to show y'all one of my absolute favorite locations on their island. I really appreciate the thought and effort that went into this location. The fact they really thought about how plaza can be seen through these castle gates, the water code being in place so perfectly and making such a structured area for such a beautiful transition. I feel like this is such great inspo for a lot of great uh, island themes out there. And then that location leads back towards the entry. So the entry has two different ways we can transition into other locations on their map. This one is more towards the edge of the right side. Now I do want to explore the right side of their map real fast before we go back towards the left just because it looks like we can't access this location from any other spot on their island. So we'll go ahead and check this 
area out real fast, but they have their beaches decorated, of course, over here too. It looks like we have like a little cafe on the beach. Once again, like I said earlier, they put so much effort into this island. I just adore this little cafe area. And then the path placement is just beautifully done, especially with that little spot with the roses right there. The dropped seashells just add a perfect touch to this area. Now, I'm not sure if this was their plan, but I'm pretty sure this is a extension of their actual cafe up here. And the cafe is actually inside this villager home. So this is why I wanted to tour interiors on today's island tour, just because there is so much content going on and it just really ties in these exterior builds as well. So the first villager home I got to check out was Mint's home. And as you can see, this is the main cafe build. And something I really love about this interior is how they use the glow in the dark stickers on the wall to look like doors that might transition, you know, over to maybe the kitchen or some restrooms, but we could just have a lot of really gorgeous vintage decor in here. Another detail that really caught my eye was this window that was kind of like framed by the espresso machine to look like the medieval walls that we have been seeing already on their island outside. I mean, there's just so much detail and thought that has gone into a build like we're seeing right now. And this is why I'm really wanting to do interiors because it just adds a whole new immersive experience on your island. Something I really wish we would have seen from the 2.0 update is the Happy Home Paradise elements. Like, you know those buildings we get to decorate on Happy Home Paradise? Imagine if we could have had something like we're seeing right now on our actual island and the villagers could work on them and we could go visit those builds. But this is a great alternative to that if you're someone like me who was really bummed out we couldn't have the school on their island. Just having some sort of an interior accessible like this to your visitors really just adds a different experience to an island like we're checking out today. So after viewing that cafe and gorgeous peninsula area, we are back at the plaza and this is that location I was talking about earlier, how you could see from the castle gate, the clock from the plaza building. And I just really love this location so much. But we are gonna make our way back towards the left side. There is so much more to explore. Like we're only seven minutes into today's video and I'm not even halfway done. That's how much content has been added onto this island. So before we explore more of the main island, we are gonna check out these beaches real fast just because like mentioned earlier, every single beach is fully decorated. Looks like we have this really nice little sitting area. I really love how we can see the medieval walls kind of in the distance. And this is that same location earlier where I said I couldn't enter that antique shop for the villager home. So we're gonna go across this bridge and make our way towards the edge of the left side. Now, since I am notorious for missing locations on an island, especially when it comes to decorated beaches, I think we're gonna explore all of the beaches down here first before we go back towards the main island. So just like I mentioned earlier, they're using that main dirt path over here to kind of like, you know, add more detail to their beaches. And I just really love when people do this. I know I said that earlier, but I just think it really does add such a nice, you know, elegant and overgrown touch to your beach. Just makes it feel a lot more detailed in general. Then they have this really nice little dock area. And then we're gonna go back up towards the top left of their island. And they used a lot of wheat fields just to kind of add more greenery. As you can see, there's a lot of different pirate barrels kind of, you know, clustered throughout the area. Looks like this is another way you can also access the beach too from their island. I personally struggle with decorating beaches. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like the beaches are super hard to decorate with on this game. So seeing decorated beaches like we are today really just helps, you know, give us some inspo. I feel like all the decor we're seeing can work for pretty much any kind of Animal Crossing theme, whether you're doing something more urban or maybe something more vintage-like, even natural. This is just great inspo for everybody out there. So I don't want to spoil any other areas while we go further up on their map. So let's go back towards the uh, entry of their island and we're going to explore this little area over here where this villager home is. So this is how they're incorporating some of the natural elements on this island. We have this really gorgeous little transitional area and then on top of that terraform we can see kind of a angled bridge. I really love the simplicity of some of these fake buildings with just the castle tower and medieval walls. This is a really great solution if you don't have room to do any you know major terraformed builds but you still kind of want to fill the location in so I really love that idea and this whole entire location is just incredibly beautiful and so well done. I love that idea with the bushes and that evergreen ash kind of sitting in the middle with that waterscape. I feel like that is such a gorgeous idea for even a more urban style theme. Honestly, Zuby Harmony makes some of the most beautiful structured builds I have ever seen. So if you're interested in seeing more content like on this island tour today, I really do recommend checking out their Instagram. I will have it linked in the videos uh, description. Anyways, before we continue exploring more of 
of this beautiful island, we're gonna check out yet another decorated villager home. So the next couple of villager homes we are gonna be touring are not cafe themes, but still really well done and beautifully decorated. I still strive to be able to decorate villagers like we're seeing today. I just feel like interiors are truly just really difficult to decorate with on this game. As somebody who never focuses on interiors, I just get so overwhelmed with the idea of decorating them. But today's island tour really has given me so much inspiration and I'm looking forward to actually tackling some villager homes in the future now. So it looks like this is now our third villager home we couldn't enter because they are exploring the island. So y'all let me know how Rowan's house ended up looking. So instead we will be checking out this little transitional spot right here. And I just really love all of the little sitting areas, especially with the floating biotop planter on that table. Honestly, I usually use that item as a filler, but to use it on a table, I feel like that is such a gorgeous and original idea. So I absolutely adore that. So it looks like in this little villager neighborhood, we can explore one more villager home. And I'm really excited to show y'all this one because I love the color coordinations they were able to do. The color coordination with all the blues against all these white and cream tones is just absolutely beautiful. I just really, again, appreciate all the thought and effort they put into these villager homes. I feel like these interiors are gonna be such great inspo for those new to Animal Crossing or just need some interior uh, inspiration. So across this bridge, right next to the church build we had this gorgeous service area outside and then you can kind of see that water code peeping out in the distance and that location is actually the land bridge that we are about to explore but I did notice on the map I totally missed their able store so I'm gonna go back over here real fast before we go over to that location so like many of us we are bummed out we couldn't edit obviously our NPC exteriors but Zuby Harmony has definitely found a loophole around this if you're new to Animal Crossing hopefully this will bring you some inspiration but hiding these buildings with the castle items can really help make them blend into your island theme and get rid of those harsh colors that may not match you know your island aesthetic I really love how they have kind of done a more castle core approach to this especially with you know that gazebo item right there to add some extra greenery and the nice thing about this location too is it's right off of plaza so this is that villager home we couldn't enter and then you go up this incline and that's their able store so just a really nice you know easy transition from their airport all the way up to that store. So we have already seen this angled neighborhood. So I'm gonna go ahead and transition to a new location on their map. And this is actually behind that angled villager neighborhood. So we are now kind of nearing the edge of the top left side of their map. And we have this gorgeous vineyard area. And I feel like a build like this is definitely a must have for a European styled island. I also know that this house is decorated too. So we will be exploring that as well. But y'all just check out all this greenery and all the little purple tones to just really bring this whole location together. I absolutely adore the time of year they chose for their island. I just feel like it suits this theme really well and just all these greenery choices really just brought this build to life. So I absolutely love this house interior. So it looks like we have a foyer styled entry to this home and then as we go towards the right side we are greeted with this gorgeous brewery room and also just like you know some storage. So something that really caught my eye was how they used this custom design code and framed it in with these pillars to make it look like wine storage. So I feel like this is such a beautiful touch to a build like this, especially with the build outside of the home as well. And this next room in their home kind of gives me like a consultation sort of vibe in this area. I just really love all the colors. I really love the use of those closet doors. I'm pretty sure those are the glow in the dark stickers customized, which is such a game changer with the 2.0 update we got. They really do just add such a nice extra detail to home interiors like we're seeing today. Anyways, as we were touring this home interior, I was starting to kind of get vibes of how this house kind of reminds me of the local plantation homes we have here in Louisiana. So this just made me appreciate their interiors anymore just because it reminds me of my home. Anyways, we have this really gorgeous little patio area. I love the use of that fence kind of framing in and giving us an overgrown little sitting area vibe. And then the use of the vines on the ceiling just really make this feel like it really is indeed outside so such a beautiful build in general and again so inspirational so the next room in this house kind of gives me like a bar and restaurant sort of vibe I really love the choice of colors here and again just all the decor that they have chosen for this room it really just brought the build to life I think there is one more room in the house we have to explore and that is right here in the uh, basement I really just adore the fact that they made this into a little reception 
room and then I feel like also the wedding items just aren't used enough and they have definitely been used absolutely beautifully here and then once again we have those glow in the dark stickers looking like little closet doors on each side of the room just again a beautiful interior decor and I really do hope that this home interior brought you a ton of inspiration like it did for me so now that we're finished exploring the vineyard area it's time to also check out this location by their secret beach again just beautiful waterscape throughout this whole entire island and then we have this really nice little natural transition leading up to our secret beach so I felt like this was such a really nice you know inspirational spot because I struggle with the secret beach a ton and especially when you're doing islands that use some city like elements I felt like this was such a wonderful idea especially for someone who might be wanting to incorporate more natural areas on their island so now that we've seen this whole entire location I'm gonna go ahead and make my way back up this incline and this is right next to that land bridge we are about to go check out so I think to reach the land bridge I'm gonna go up this incline where the remaining villager homes are because I noticed on their map it kind of loops back over towards that bridge so I don't want to miss any locations on their map so I think that's how we're gonna navigate through the rest of their island so we are now at the top of their map and we're gonna check out this villager home here and once again just like I've said a bajillion times throughout this video they have done a phenomenal job with this interior I really love the use of the partition wall over here kind of giving Sasha their own bedroom and then on the opposite side we have this really cozy living room area I also absolutely adore the touch of that cruiser bike just kind of being in that corner filling up that empty space that was such a cute detail to this whole entire interior and once again just some really great inspiration so this top part of their island also serves as a really gorgeous lookout to that land bridge we are slowly but surely approaching but I just wanted to show y'all kind of how they've transitioned this area on their map we have this really nice little structured fountain area and I just feel like when you have structured locations on your island like we're seeing today they can be really difficult to transition from but of course Zuby Harmony has provided lots of great inspiration on how you can transition from a structured build like we're seeing today so I think we have three remaining spots left on this island we still need to go check out the museum the land bridge and of course this location here and this next location is definitely one of my favorite spots on their island many of y'all know I'm a sucker for the party light arch but look how beautiful this area is I feel like doing builds like this at the edge of your map are really difficult to transition from and just decorate around in general so this is definitely some great inspiration if you're wanting some sort of like a dock area on your island but you're running out of space and you're only available at locations or at the edge of your map then once again we have a beautifully decorated beach and then this is where they ended up placing their campsite now I know I said this earlier in today's video but I still can't get over how much content they were able to pack on such a small island I always feel like I'm running out of island space on every single theme that I create and this island today has definitely inspired me to try to get more creative with my space usage as you can see there's just so much content and lots of different areas to explore and lots of really fun you know filler areas as well I feel like today's island tour is really gonna help inspire many of us out there who are struggling with adding content on our island and of course just wanting a really nice flow to it as well so once we leave the villager homes in the dock area we are finally approaching one of my absolute favorite locations on their map and that is this overgrown land bridge many of y'all know I love putting these on basically every single island I create but I absolutely adore this original and personal touch to this idea I really love once again like we said in the beginning of the tour the use of that partition kind of looking like you know a tunnel where the water is flowing through and then we have this gorgeous overgrown centerpiece with the scooter item kind of just passing through on each side and then we also have a really nice lookout to that bridge we were exploring where those villager homes were as well and again just some really gorgeous overgrown greenery on top of that water code this island tour today has also inspired me to start making my perspectives also functional and able to be reached and explored I really love how this uh, perspective was able to be seen from the land bridge but we were also able to access it from those uh, villager homes so just a lot of great ideas just on this island in general I mean it has just been so inspirational I think we do have one last spot we need to explore and that is the museum so I'm gonna go ahead and make my way over there so we can kind of see what they have done for the museum exterior I really love how packed this island was but it was also really easy to kind of you know explore through and navigate around I really wish we could have been able to tour the other villager homes today but just like I said earlier if y'all are able to access those homes since our villagers today were roaming around the island let me know what you thought about them in the comments section below so I wanted to make 
make sure I didn't miss any locations on their map and it looks like this little centerpiece area leads right back up towards their entry so this is actually the same incline we went up in the beginning of today's uh, tour. I went ahead and transitioned us back towards the museum so this is how they ended up decorating. We have this really gorgeous structured centerpiece on each side with that beautiful water code. I absolutely love how they did this museum entrance. I think it is so original and well done and I think that is every single thing on their island. Let me know your favorite location from today's island tour in the comment section below. With that being said, I hope today's island tour brought you so much Animal Crossing inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and have a horrible day. I'll see you next video.